Thunder, 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 Thundercats, Hulk! Sword of Omens, come to my hand. I, lion command it. Hi, this is Larry Kennedy, the voice of lion and Thundercats and the Bluegrass and Silverhawks and the voice of Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird and Count Chocula and so much more. Forget that, though. What I'm here to tell you is listen. Keep listening to the Canned Air Podcast. Do it! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Canned Air, your tribute to comics and pop culture. I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. And I'm Randy Hardenbrook. And joining us today from uh, Premium Edition Games, uh, the Switch Mania Playcast. He's written some awesome freaking books. We welcome Jeff Wittenhagen to the show. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me on. We're going to have a good time today in our retro roundtable. We're going to be talking about our favorite indie games, which uh, I'm glad, I'm hoping you guys have more picks than I do because I've got three and I've only played two of them. So I, I hope. Wow. Yeah. I think Jeff's about ready to leave at this point now. <laughs> <laughs> what, did I say something wrong earlier? <laughs> did I say something wrong earlier, Randy? Oh, no, 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 no. no you're fine. Okay. Oh, oh, that was actually... Like, that was an actual question. Good. I thought I fucked up something. Okay. <laughs> I think it's just for your lack of uh, knowing indie games. I don't yeah, know. for shame, for shame. But when it comes for to a Spider-Man shame. conversation, then Randy will be the one who gets shamed, right? There you go. Yeah, there we well. go. <laughs> we're going to be talking about our favorite indie games in the retro, and then we're going to turn our attention over to Jeff and talk about all the awesome uh, games and just everything you guys have going on over there. It seems uh, like a fucking dream job to have, so I can't wait to talk more about that. <laughs> but uh, before we do that, don't forget to find us on Twitter at CannedAirPod and on Instagram at Canned underscore Air and uh, Patreon.com forward slash CannedAirPod. You can get on there, back the show, and for some uh, of your hard-earned dollars, we'll give you some of our hard recorded podcast that sounded kind of pervy didn't it we'll just give you some extra <laughs> podcast yeah very pervy we're just going to give you podcasts you can't get for uh on on itunes okay people uh what else we got guys that's your guys's cue randy jack that's yeah, you we're not I, doing it <laughs> yeah we're not doing the game show anymore so uh, evergreen hey, uh, Evergreen, yes. Oh. Ever clear, Jack. Evergreen. Yeah. We are uh, proud members of the Evergreen Network, which we should be getting released on here, I'd say, next month-ish, middle the, of March. The merger is happening as we speak, actually. It's, uh, today, tomorrow, I think, is when it's happening. But, yeah, that will officially be, like, press release and all that shit will be uh, early March. So it's happening, though. We're excited. So, Moving yeah. On. Going, oh, yes, well, you sir. You got that right. No changes for the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, don't there worry, listeners, because you're still going to hear us, and uh, nothing's changing on your end other than we're just going to get some uh, steroids pumped into the show, get uh, yeah. a lot more endorsements, and just uh, looking forward to a lot of the opportunities that Evergreen's going to present us. We finally got us a piece of that pie, is what Randy's yeah. trying to say. So, all right, let's <laughs> kick it off with this week's retro round table. Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> All right, favorite indie games. Uh, who wants to kick us off? Randy, go for it. I'm going to go indie PC game back from the early 90s. So back in the day, a lot of the shareware titles and stuff would have where you'd have the first couple episodes available and then you had to buy the rest of them. So I used to be really hooked on a game called Jazz Jackrabbit, <laughs> which was a... <laughs> Nice. I've never heard of that. <laughs> it is basically a side scrolling shoot 'em up with a green bunny uh, just taking out turtles. I mean, it's Sonic with a gun, essentially. And mm. it was a lot of fun. It had a lot of pop culture references. Um, again, it was a shareware title, so you got to play episodes, I think, like one and two for free. And then you had to pay for the, the uh, remaining episodes. But uh, it's a lot of fun. They should have just called it Sonic with a gun. It probably would have sold better. <laughs> How long? When? When? Uh, it was like early 90s, and they did a sequel. Um, I don't well, know if they did 
Sounds yeah, about that's... right for shareware, because that's about when that was all over the place. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. You guys remember a game? I don't. It's not an indie game, but it, what you said, Randy, just made me remember uh, Redneck Rampage. Oh, Redneck Rampage was ridiculous. First oh. person shooter on the PC. It was so oh my goodness. Fun. <laughs> Didn't you have to eat like moon pies and shit to get your health back and drink beer? <laughs> and then you'd have to stop yeah. and actually take a piss and then like kill chickens and shit. It was so much fun. It was a there were a game. lot of those games back in the day that just took the Wolfenstein Doom formula and yeah, action I was gonna and say, took yeah. it to the next. Like um, Blood. Remember, it was like the Gold Oh, Raiders. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then Redneck Rampage was the ridiculous one. And then you had Postal. And then you... <laughs> oh, and then Postal. The... <laughs> yes. Forgot and about that one. Opposite end of that, you had Chex Quest, which was the free, like, <laughs> got it, the uh, cereal the box. cereal version, yep, yeah. Yep. They even did, like, a oh. uh, like a Bible version of that game. Like, you had a slingshot. Oh, Su- Super Su- Noah's Ark. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, on Super Nintendo. Yep, Super <laughs> Noah's Ark 3D, the only unlicensed game on the Super Nintendo yeah. that was released <laughs> wow. during the time frame. Jeff, didn't you have to actually plug that into a regular Super Nintendo cart to actually even get it to work with a bypass chip and stuff? Yeah, they they couldn't figure it out back in the day, so they literally just put it in the cartridge where you had to plug in another one. Like just any no other idea. game, it didn't matter like what other game, but yeah, yeah, it didn't even require like a Super FX chip or anything. Like the game could have just been anything. How what? far we've come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the reverse game genie. <laughs> <laughs> Deteriorate your games. <laughs> The game moocher instead of the game genie. <laughs> I don't right. think it's more solid than Wolfenstein was though on the Super Nintendo. So there yeah. is that. Mm, true. Yeah. Duke Nukem was another fun one. I always enjoyed those games. Oh, All right. Yeah. Uh, over to Jeff. <laughs> so I kind of jokingly said, "Well, start mentioning which console you want me to go with," because like I have a ton of knowledge on all systems, but um. I did write uh, my first book on indie games was called NES Oddities and the Homebrew Revolution. And I, before we record, I showed them like I have this whole collection of indie aftermarket games behind me. The Catalyst, though, I would absolutely say would be my favorite of those. Um, it's on the NES. It's called the Battle Kid Fortress of Peril. I've never even and, heard of that. No, me either. Yeah, so that game was released, I want to say, and I could be wrong, uh, but it's around 2005 or 2006 by Savag Games. And the game is essentially Mega Man, but you have one-hit deaths. Oh, oh and damn. The, the music's ridiculous, but the checkpoints are so frequent that if you die, you just go back like a screen or two. And then you just kind of get through this little maze. And then if you get to it, you can get to the next spot. The boss battles are like something out of a shoot 'em up bullet hell massacre. It's amazing. <laughs> like like the twitch you have to do, but it's so addicting that you just want to do one more try. Actually, it was one of the first games I beat. Um, and I ended up getting, they had like a boss rush mode at the end that they'd give you a code when you beat it. And the, um, the developer created a contest for to get the limited edition of Battle Kid 2, and he only releases like 10. Um, the, wow. the limited edition, whoever won won the speed run, and I won the speed run. I actually beat the world record on my speed run. I recorded the thing and everything. It was ridiculous. No shit. Awesome. Wow. And so I have both the limited edition of Battle Kid 2, and I traded, and I had the same number of Battle Kid 1, and he put them in these clamshells. It's so cool. That like, is awesome. Absolutely started my obsession with collecting NES homebrews, and I've released a few of my own now. So it's like I have four games that I've released on the NES homebrew over the years. So, That's like, so cool. love Battle Kid Forces of Petro. Awesome game. Oh, man. Now, I, is there, like, any footage of this game on YouTube maybe I could check out? Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, there's footage of it. And then on Play Asia, they just released a Famicom version, which is almost a, a re release where they refined some things in it and they created a story and everything. It's on the Famicom. It's all English, though. But it, you okay. know, it plays in like with a converter and some of the more modern consoles that have both in it. Um, hmm. Yeah. So they just released a, a third game but really it's just a rehash of the first but it's it's super cool but you and there's tons of stuff on youtube on it i'm gonna look that up because that sounds really cool and it also kind of reminds me of um like i'm just i'll go next because my next picks what my pick was going to be super meat boy oh <laughs> nice you guys have played I've that i wanted 
Mm-hmm. I've seen it all the time, and I've been curious, but I've never played it. But I've heard it's fun. It's very fun. Um, it's addictive, man. It's hard to explain. You're just kind of running through these obstacle courses. But, you know, very much uh, like Jeff was saying, you know, it's kind of like the, the Mega Man thing, you know, if you if you died, it only threw you back like just a few steps. So you were just kind of right back to where you were to try again. And it also had kind of like a the wall sliding mechanism that Mega Man kind of had, you know. But um, just he was so hard to control. He was almost kind of like Luigi <laughs> in uh, Super Mario 2, where he just kind of was all over the place. Or, you know, when he landed, he would slide clear off the edge if you didn't pay attention. But one of the coolest features was, you know, as hard as these things were to pass, let's say it took you 99 tries to do it. At the end, once you beat it, you can see all 99 attempts play over the top of each other. And it's it's so freaking cool. It's so cool. And he's made of meat, so there's like it looks like blood everywhere when he blows yeah. up. And like <laughs> and he's a trail of meat. <laughs> there's like that squishy sound when he walks too, like... <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> when did you when did you first play it oh it's been a long time ago i think it was when the first came out i had uh, somebody had told I me i want to say it. i played it on the 360 and i think it's what caused mine the red ring of death because <laughs> we played it so much <laughs> dude i it was definitely on my 360 and i definitely yeah. had the red ring of death but yeah that game was wasn't there like a documentary or something that came out that followed like the guys who made that game and a few other indie games <laughs> right I was actually just pointing. I have like my Switch collection. I actually have Super Meat Boy, my like, top forty games on the no. Switch. I have it physically. It's so <laughs> um, good. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Edward McMullen was the creator, and they both did a documentary on it. Yeah. It was on the PC release. I want to say of the game. I I was like obsessed with it for like years. It's such a fun game. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's like another movie where it follows those guys who did that film or that game, excuse me. And a f- indie a, game, like two or three other indie game creators, and like the point- yeah, it was about um the main one was they followed the creator of Fez, and he was like having a he was like yes. having a depression breakdown, and yeah, I think it's just called Indie Game the Movie. I think. Oh, okay. How did I, I forget think. that? No, I mean I think, I think you're right. I think, I think was, you're right. Like for real. <laughs> I think you're right, but it was interesting because, you know, these guys were waking up on the day that their uh, games were supposed to be showing up in the Xbox Live Marketplace, and, like, they were all excited, and they're like, oh, shit, where's my game at? Because it wasn't there, and, like, all the stress and problems that ensued after that. Like, I can't imagine uh, doing what you uh, and Jonathan are doing, Jeff, like, the stress, like, damn. The crazy thing is, so that's from, like, the developer perspective, but back then it was, like, I was saying I, I recorded podcasts back in the day. It was the Wild West. It was the Wild West for indie games. Like it was unheard of to release indie games at that massive a scale. And Xbox and Microsoft were treading new ground. Nowadays, I mean, we, with all the limited companies, you're seeing it physically. Even like we're in a big, like huge bubble right now. Has it burst? No, but could it? Maybe because there's just so much out there. There's so much yeah. uh, selection for gamers, and mm-hmm. like I just pointed, like Super Meat is on my collection physically on the Switch, which is awesome. It's amazing to be able to have that in posterity. I mean, there's other games from the 360 era, like um, Scott Pilgrim. Now that's getting a physical um, yeah. on the Switch, and so like we're at a, like a different era now. But back then, it was the Wild West. Like it was so weird seeing it, and I mean. I was, you know, I think I was in Florida at the time because I move around all the damn time. Um, but um, I, I just remember, like, it was so awesome playing these retro-inspired games. It was such a new thing at the time to see it at, right. like, on our 360s and PS3s at the time. Like, yeah. They're like, why aren't crazy. they using top of the notch uh, graphics here? Why are we backpedaling? But then you're so glad they did because it's like, oh, my God, these games are so much more enjoyable. Like, I played Super Meat Boy way longer than I would have played like a Call of Duty, you know, game or yeah. something. Yeah. It's just well, so I much was more relaxing. Battle Kid at the time and they got me off Battle Kid to play Super Meat Boy because it was <laughs> around the same time. Like, <laughs> like they got me to go back on modern consoles that were collecting dust because I was just playing my NES. Right. Like Well, they know their uh they know their customer, right? All righty. Well uh, let's move over to Jackery. Mine is called Dead Cells. It came out a few years ago, and it's it's got that well, it's like a 16-bit graphic look, 
and it's a side scroller beat em up but it's the point of the game basically is you have to die it's so hard but as you die <laughs> you collect different weapons but you unlock those weapons so you can actually choose from them at the very beginning but there's i don't i don't even know how many hours i've put into that stupid game and i know i haven't even come close because it's so hard and you only get one life but you can go through and pick different you know get a little bit more health do more damage but at the same time it, it just gets harder and harder and harder hmm so We've that's like your that. roguelike it's like your roguelike is what that is the dead yeah. cells series yep. like there's a whole innovative genre now where it's like that one more time and they just edge you along a little bit so you keep playing the damn thing mm -hmm. like <laughs> so addictive Girls and but there's different along. paths you can go to so it's not it's not really it doesn't get boring because you can be like well i'm gonna go this direction and the maps change every time you play too, so it's not like you can memorize everything. You get a little bit of ideas where the where the the enemies are, but or the bosses. But yeah, it's almost a, it's almost a new game every single time. And the amount of weapons you get is crazy. That it, yeah, it's you can just keep playing and playing and playing. The game's so fun. I need to try that one. You still have it? Yep, it's on. Uh, well, I got a PS4. I'm pretty sure it's on Xbox too, though. Is it? Uh, yeah, I, I want to say it's on everything. I, I think it's on Switch, I have it physically too. on the Switch. I have a yeah, physical yeah. copy of it. <clears throat> awesome. well, then it's probably in the Switch Marketplace then, too, right? If there's a physical, yep. yeah. Yeah. Cool. It might be on Xbox Game Pass, too. There's so many indie games on Xbox Game Pass right yeah. now. It's ridiculous. Like, that's how I play all my stuff now. Like, if it's coming out physically on the Switch, I'm like, oh, it's for free right now on Xbox Game Pass. Let me try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> my Switch is I still the... buy it. But... <laughs> My Switch is the only console that's still kind of surviving. My Xbox is really kind of on its last leg. Holy oh, shit, look at that. that. Jeez. <laughs> I, was just, I just pan over my camera. I got my Switch kiosk. Like, I was literally <laughs> playing Switch before we recorded. <laughs> that is freaking cool. That is awesome. <laughs> no, I won't Bit insane. <laughs> Bit insane. <laughs> oh, well, that Love brings it. us back around to Randy. So I'm going to try and redeem myself on this one. Uh, more recent yeah. indie game I've played. Uh, it's called Papers, Please. And basically what it is, is it's a, uh, a simulator where you take control of basically a immigration inspector for this Cold War style company or uh, country that just opened fuck? up. Really? <laughs> no, dude, it, it sounds boring as hell, but you get into it and it is freaking amazing. It is literally like a mix between Carmen San Diego and Oregon Trail. So basically it's like a day cycle and it's a timer and you have so many minutes to go through and either uh, approve or deny all these people coming through and you have rules and stuff you got to check. But uh, if you do something wrong or something, you, it could be a terrorist you let through. So there's like this little background image of them like walking through the kiosk and they'll like literally blow some shit up. But at the end of your wow. work day... It, sh it comes up with a list of like, okay, hey, your kid had to eat today, One, somebody got sick and got medicine, and like, this is what you made. So it's literally like a, a money management style uh, hmm. simulator as well. So it's it's set in like 82, and the graphics are just very drab. It feels very Cold War-ish, if that makes sense. But, and then uh, you die of dysentery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go all the way back to Oregon Trail. I mean, you can literally, you can literally tell the game like, okay, the kids aren't eating tomorrow, so I can save money, and it's just, it, it, it does follow a storyline. You have like, I think a couple weeks worth to get through it, but um, it, it just, it's very, it, like I said, it seems really weird until you get into it, and then you get addicted because you're like scanning these passports, like, oh, well, hey this picture doesn't match you and you can like interrogate them. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. Hmm. A job at the post office would probably be thrilling <laughs> for you. <laughs> then he starts playing postal. Like we talked about earlier. Oh yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. It comes full circle. <laughs> wow. That does sound uh, interesting though. I, um, yeah. where do you play that Randy on your switch? Uh, it's on a P it's on PC. You it's have on to PC. use the, uh, it might be on other consoles, but I played it on PC. Hmm. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Wow. Papers. Ch check Papers. it out on YouTube. It's Papers, Please. Papers, Please. Papers. Papers, Please. <laughs> Give me the papers, please. <laughs> <laughs> Denied. Denied. So I, I thought you were say you said 80s. I thought you were going to go back to, like, World War II. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> we don't want to play that one. <laughs> Give me some papers. <laughs> Give me some papers. 
No. Randy, what are you playing? <laughs> You're going to love it. All right, that brings us back around to Jeff. So you guys are going with some modern stuff, so I can go with a modern one. Um, I'm not going to shill and talk about my own titles because everything we release is indie, by the way. So um, I can do a dry run at the end, and we can talk about some of them. But like when we do it, I'll, we'll talk about the titles because they're all oh, really well. cool. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I assume so. Um, I will go something that's in my top five on the Nintendo Switch. It's an indie game. It's called Oxium Verge. Um, Oxium Verge is what they call a Metroidvania. Um, it was programmed by one person, Thomas Happ. <laughs> like, it's programmed by one dude. And it is amazing. It's the most retro-inspired synth wave music. You go through and you're just mm. running through all the corridors, getting all your power-ups as you progress. You get to look at the map and see it unfold and see mm. places you can't go to that you'll go to later. And it's exactly what you want in a Metroid. It's way more Metroid than Vania. Like, it is really, really awesome. Has a story that unfolds. It's all, like, creepy, dystopian futures with lots of giant head, like, robot-looking things that you come across that talk nice. to you. And, like, it is, that it is rad. Cool. And I think, yeah, and I think he's doing a, a sequel um, very soon. Like, I, I think Nintendo, a Nintendo Direct announced that they were doing a sequel to to um oxygen awesome. verge which it's just a single guy programmed it though it's so amazing about it and amazing. like that's what makes it indie to me is it's like all right this is awesome this is amazing they did a full like giant physical for it on the switch like a few years back that i had to pick up oh, wow at that point i already played it i think on my vita or something like i don't even know if i have it on my vita i might not i don't even know maybe it's ps3 huh? <laughs> you said oxium verge was the name yeah, with A X I O M, Oxium Verge, really rad game. Okay, it's in my I'm writing top it down. Sure. I want to like, look that up. That sounds awesome. Yeah, you, know, you know, it it sits on my shelf among like Mario Odyssey and and um, Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I have Oxium Damn. Verge over here, <laughs> along with so a it's that other, good. Like, it's good enough title. to sit on the oh, shelf amongst it. those ranks. Wow. Yeah, oh, I've so seen I, this on so Steam I, before. I've so almost got. I got my collection, but then in the in the in the closet, I got the top five with all the collector stuff, and that's where Oxium's at in my collection. Wow. Like, it's one of the top. One what of my an, favorites. For what sure. an honor. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> no, I I've, I've got the same thing with that's toys. Like, I got a general toy shelf, and then I have this yeah. one place over here where the best of my, the best of the best. My, my turtle prey Shrine. station is what I call it, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I created my own shelving to display my Switch collection, which originally was NES, but I got too many Switch games. My Switch collection outgrew it, so I had to move the top five from the top over into another section. And yeah. Constant I, I flux is the collections. The candles burning on either walking side. Walking in and just... <laughs> I'm sorry, Randy. I didn't mean to cut you off, buddy. What were you saying? I had this mental image of just Jeff walking in with a new Switch game and just taking his hand and knocking all the uh, Nintendo games <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, it happened this, is your this new weekend. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. This weekend with, and this is an indie game. This is an amazing indie nice. game, and it just was released. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to spoil it. It's oh. a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody can take a place on that shelf, it seems, right? Well, I mean, it just has to connect, right? I guess so. My own personal ones are going to have their own section because I've released them. I'm not going to. They'll be with the regular collection, but like the top ones, I'll just have it somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would too. If I were you, I'd be like, this is my it's work right them. here. This is, yeah, this yeah. is what I have done. <laughs> I would I would do that for sure. In total. I mean, we have we have our awards and shit hanging on the wall in here. So we I guess we are kind of fluffing ourselves, aren't we, guys? Mm hmm. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'll I'll explain what these are later too. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. yeah, yeah I'll every do it. time you turn that camera, we see like tons more of awesome goodness. You're like you're in an awesome little room there, aren't you? I mean, it doesn't even oh, look yeah, little. Just... It looks it has to be big to have a freaking sw <laughs> that <Commodore>. is awesome. <laughs> a Nintendo television, just right there with the NES wow. games. Like I just got stuff <laughs> everywhere. My like. I am crunched in here. It's just one bedroom. Like that's all I. I gotta limit myself, otherwise I just keep buying things. I gotta <laughs> scope, scope creep. Yeah. That's the collector mentality. Like I can't collect figures and comics anymore because I had to. Oh. I had to 
honed it in. I One. keep saying that, but then I keep buying them. So I'm just like, okay, I'm going to have to like find. If I buy like the USS flag, I'm just going to have to sleep on it and get rid of the bed, like to justify having it. You know what I mean? Because it, it takes, is big enough. It's big enough. It is. It <laughs> it's is. It's big enough. <laughs> All right. Um, that was okay. That was Jeff's pick, correct? That was me. Yeah. That All was right. Long, yeah. Um, <laughs> the next one I have is uh, you guys have probably heard of it Goat Simulator. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun little game yeah, now. And it's is funny. It? It's, one of my, one of my da- it's one of my daughter's like favorite games on the Switch to play. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> because it's so, I mean, there's really no point to it. It's just kind of like a stress thing, right? I mean, you're just running this goat around and jumping him around and kind of ragdolling him into stuff. Like, it's just, there's no point other than just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so much fun. Like, how simple an idea and what a great idea at the same time, you know? Like, we don't have to give him a purpose. Just just go have fun with him. I love that. Just run into cars and get thrown. <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of reminds me of, uh, even though they're not even similar games, but um, just, I guess, kind of the environments. Uh, what was that Katamari game where you, you just roll the big just roll, roll around, around, just picking yeah. shit up for no yeah. apparent reason? That was a lot was of fun. Yeah, Katamari Damasi? Katamari Damasi? Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that, that was, was that was the PS2 version. There's like several of them, but that was the PS2 version. And I think there was like a point system. Certain objects you picked up got you more points. So I mean, it was it was an actual game. But anytime I played it, it wasn't like watching the score. I was just having fun picking shit up, and it was relaxing, you know. And the same kind of uh, thing that came from Goat Simulator. Just I love watching that goat get beat up at uh, you know for my, my expense. It's awesome. <laughs> It's pretty much how it is when I play GTA. I don't do anything but just <laughs> screw around and end up dying and killing other people. There's not, I mean, and that's just playing during the story mode. I ended up just screwing around the whole time. I don't follow the story at all. The online now my, is... my wife, yeah, I say my wife's been playing GTA online. I think she has over a hundred hours and no i think over a thousand hours some of the amount Jesus. of days she's like a mob boss in it she never played the story mode and just fucks around online that's mm-hmm. what she does <laughs> all the gta's i have no idea the story in does. any of them i do the first couple missions and then all of a sudden i'm like i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna check this out and then he, the cops come after me then i die and then i start over and then it just starts <laughs> over again GTA line online is freaking fun. I mean, it used to be a lot better, but they, they kind of gave the players too much. Like those flying fucking motorcycles with the rockets on them. Everybody <laughs> has them. There. And anytime you drive down the road, you get your ass blown up. It's like not even worth like getting your nice car out because you're just going to keep having to go pick it up at the insurance company. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they make it unplayable sometimes. Uh, those kind of people. You got to pick the certain times of day that you go play on so you can actually do something. That doesn't work anymore. Don't do it in the evening. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you get on at three in the morning and Vietnamese children are blowing your ass to hell instead of people in Arkansas. <laughs> as big as it is on Twitch streaming now, it, does, it doesn't surprise me because there's always someone streaming a game and GTA is one of the big ones. Yeah, yeah. But it just gets to the point where it's just like, man, I don't even fuck with it. Because even if you just want to do your missions or like, you know, work on your bunker or your, you know, your nightclub or run, do drug runs, whatever, you can't <laughs> because just there's always <laughs> someone there just to blow you away immediately. So you just get pissed. Like, fuck this game. And then you turn on <laughs> Super Meat Boy. <laughs> And then you get angry. <laughs> and then you get angry, but it's 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 a healthier angry, I think, with super controlled meat anger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're bringing the anger, not the children. <laughs> Calling you a Christmas noob and shooting you. <laughs> All right, we got time one more for one more. So, Jack, what you got? <clears throat> Mine. I'm pretty sure it's classed as indie maybe not so much anymore because they gained a lot of traction and rewards in the last couple years but hellblade sin was sacrifice i've never played that it is a i don't even know what kind of it's just a a behind the shoulder third person not shooter just fighting game basically and it's about a this girl that comes home to find her her man was a uh, sacrificed by a bunch of Vikings it takes place way back in the, the Viking times mm-hmm. and she is already suffers from a psychosis so she's not quite right in the head 
But then she, mm-hmm. her whole mission is to go find Hela and try to get her soul, get her man's soul back. Mm-hmm. And she's willing to do whatever. But the the best part of the graphics are amazing in the game. They did a bunch of like secret photographic stuff that they did. There's a little uh, featurette that comes with the game that goes a lot into the making of it. And the game itself, you have to play it with headphones on because they did a lot with 3D sound to where you're experiencing a lot of the psychosis that the main character's experiencing. Mm. So the whole time you're hearing people all around you whisper, talk to you in your voice. Like 360 total stereo. Yeah, yeah. I tried Ah, playing it just through the TV, and it's nowhere even near as close, especially when people get right, it's right in your ear just like... Go over there and do this. It's so creepy, but <laughs> the story is so good it's and crazy. the graphics are great. I've tried doing that effect on the show before, like on past Halloween episodes. And then like when I'm getting ready for a new Halloween episode, I'll kind of, you know, revisit our old ones to make sure I'm not repeating myself. And then I'll like hear footsteps behind me. Like, what the fuck was that? You know, and it's just in the recording. <laughs> but um, it's funny, you know, that reminds me of uh, one of the Arkham games, those Batman games where you're fighting with... Uh, who was it? I think maybe Scarecrow, because mm. they were even like <clears throat> they weren't just fucking with Batman in the game. Like it was actually like fucking with you because like you'd be playing and all of a sudden like the screen would glitch and it looked like the game had frozen. And so you'd start going, what's going on? Like, why is it acting like this? And like you'd be walking down like a hallway in a prison and then like piece by piece, it turns into an alley, and, you know, in the back part of Gotham. Like it just kept messing with your mind. It was really yeah. cool. Is it crazier that I know more about Super Meat Boy than about Batman? <laughs> no, it's, it's perfectly normal. I think yeah. we're the ones with problems. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's I one part in Hellblade that uh, it makes you use your other senses, too, because there's one point where everything's super blurred and dark to where you can't see where you're going, but you have to follow a, tra- or a, a, a stream. So you actually have to listen to where the water gets like centralized in your ear to be able to find your way oh, out no shit. or else you get lost That's crazy i've not been not paying attention got off the wrong track and i've had a hell of a time trying to get back okay so that's interesting you're saying like when you're moving your head this the sound isn't moving with you you're moving within a 3d kind of like well, if stereo you your, soundscape if you move your character like in different directions the sound does turn i see so you had to follow if you turn left too much and you hear the water on your left you have to turn mm-hmm. or right or no left you'd have to turn left i see i see to, to follow it yeah something like it's made for vr or something yeah it does yeah, i guess they they did implement it in vr but it was still behind the shoulder so it wasn't yeah. why it is is so much vr you're just like maybe hmm. a parrot sitting on her shoulder the the, the view that you get but <laughs> it was still super immersive <laughs> interesting all right well any other picks then before we move on gentlemen that's good for me that's well, good for Jack. That's good for Randy. Good for Jack. I mean, that's good for me. I and, mean, I got infinite games in, in the shoot, but you know. I'm sure <laughs> there's only so much time in the day. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> the <truth. laughs> All right, then we're going to jump to a quick commercial and then we'll be right back. All right, and we are back from said commercial break. That feels weird doing that, guys. I, I that's that's the first time we've uh, thrown those commercial things in there. I, it's going to be weird to the commercial. You didn't even are, take a breath. I, yeah. I I don't have to. They just put them in there somehow. I don't know how they do it. It's it's magic. Everclear, but... y'all promised me earlier for the break. <laughs> that was the best commercial break ever. I, I didn't even hear it. All right. So, uh, Jeff, let's talk about, uh, again, a premium edition games. Let's, to start anyway, I, you know, there's other things we need to talk sure. about. Your Switch collector books. I do want to talk about Switch Mania Playcast, but uh, it seems yeah, like yeah. premium edition games is uh, kind of where you guys are really focusing right now. Yeah. So, I mean, and it goes along with the uh, theme of the episode. We're talking mm-hmm. indie titles because... Um, I, essentially, you can always, you can even ask my my siblings. Like the goal was always to publish Nintendo games back in the day when I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make games. That's what we all wanted to do growing up as kids. And um, you know, a few years back, I was like, "What the heck? Let me just apply at Nintendo and see if they'll allow me to be a third party publisher." Um, took a couple years to come through, and then eventually, they're like, "All right, you're good to go." And we're, I'm like, "Really?" And enter enter a conversation that I have with Jonathan Poland, who we were doing our Switch Mania Playcast at the time, and he's like, "No, really!" Like we so we started um, 
and he has a huge network of people as JP Switch Mania. And I have a huge network as, you know, publishing video game, video game books and in the indie scene and going to conventions and things. And so, like, we just started reaching out to small time developers. And our goal is retro style indie. Like we're, we're like our one of our themes is like modern retro done right. And our first two titles that we're doing completely both indie titles created by one developer each. So um, wow. we did. Su- we're doing Super Blood Hockey, which is essentially yes. NES ice hockey with blood everywhere. Created by one <laughs> guy, Loren Lemke. Um, ridiculous game, and like it was one of those things that a few years back we we heard all about it, like when it was coming out, and then mm-hmm. it was on the digital eShop, and the eShop on the Switch is so convoluted that you really couldn't find any of the great stuff out there. And I remembered it, and I mentioned it, and we we reached out to the developer, and he's like. Heck yeah, absolutely. You can, right. <laughs> we can, we can, you know, publish this physically. And so that was our first one that we really secured that we really wanted to do. Um, the other thing is then when you go on Nintendo's website, it's very obtuse as a Nintendo mm-hmm. is. Um, <laughs> but there's something on there that said it's a MAC, a multi-application card. And I, I just looked into it, read up on it. Essentially, you can put four eShop games on one Nintendo Switch cartridge. And they oh, all wow. pop up as oh, individual wow. things. And so there's this one developer we were talking to. Um, and th- like she made four different games on the Switch, and they're all indie tiles Awesome P, one and two, or two of the games. And those games got a lot of um, exposure, and a lot of people were interested in it. And so we were like, these are really cool. She said, well, I also have Bucket Knight, Explosive Jake, and these other games that are. You know indie titles as well so we put all four on one cartridge and so like we have like That's this awesome. quad pack for our second <laughs> release of indie titles game boy inspired like really yeah. cool things and she's out in russia doesn't speak doesn't read english so we're using wow. like a mediator to do all this and we did a full comprehensive hardcover strategy guide with this game as well like complete That's with amazing. an interview with her yeah, it's so wow. cool like we're like it's the way to go. It's like ridiculous. Yeah, so that's what we we're calling our first series, which is essentially we wanted to do t- only two games, and we're going very slow with our releases. We're not going to be that company that has a launch and a title every other week. Like, that's not how we roll. Um, we're both keeping it as a passionate hobby um, right. that we happen to, you know, do a lot of times. Like, JP is literally, I think, working on stuff now instead of being on the cast with us, but <laughs> 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 on, on the podcast. Um, but so we already have a bunch of other games signed for future series and there's two other games we can talk about that we have announced um and i alluded to something that's sitting behind me um so essentially right here on the bottom i can't talk about the top one because we haven't announced it yet but the bottom one this is canvas art paintings and so we had an artist that actually painted those on canvas so this game right here is called A Robot Named Fight. When we're talking Metroidvania, so we're talking my pick of Oxygen Verge combined with Dead, we were talking about Dead Cells, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a roguelike. Well, this game is called a Rogavania. It's literally like a <laughs> oh, <shit>. Metroid-style <laughs> roguelike. There are over a million different combinations through this Metroid game, and you will die a lot in the game. It's ridiculous. And so we had an artist that commissioned the painting that we commissioned the painting to, and we're doing a retro edition that's inspired by Super Metroid on Super Nintendo Box with original art that I'm going to create oh, just like they did nice. back in the 90s. That's and freaking I'm gonna do, awesome. I'm going to do the same with the, with the one above it that I can't talk about the game. And then, so but that game is going to be in our second series it's like one of our one of our favorite games that we're going to be releasing in there and we announced that when we announced the others and people have been clamoring for it um we're working on getting a vinyl release for it like doing all the bells and whistles for it we're gonna do a full comprehensive strategy guide everything i like doing things old school that's just just me like if i know a way that they develop things because i've talked to guys at conventions who made box art like i talked with you know the guys like tom dubois who did konami essentially he's super expensive i can't afford him yet but (laughs) (laughs) But, um when i find out how they do it i'm like all right so that's how i'm going to commission my art because i want to do it the old school way like that's just it 
Well, you yeah, know, it's, it's funny ridiculous. because the people who would be, I mean, main, I mean, I guess all ages are playing, you know, eight, eight, 16, 32 bit games now, but you know, us, those of us who grew up with it, no matter how the gaming, um, industry changes and you know you know you go from cartridges to discs to just being able to download and you know everything back gets flashier look yeah everything <laughs> looks exactly back to cartridges but everything i guess my point being gets flashier and um more uniform but when we see that stuff mm-hmm. when we see that retro stuff at least in my case it like it, it excites a part of me still that these newer things just can't touch and right. that's what I'm seeing uh, behind you on the wall there. So I, I get why people, you know, yeah. would be clammy, clamoring for that. Oh, we haven't even shown that off yet. To... <laughs> like, like, I'm doing this stuff behind the scenes, pre-gaming our next releases the old school way. Our first two, we didn't quite do it that way. We just put out our two games. And now people are like, we're doing, we're premium edition games. We're doing stuff. Um so how long, when is this episode going to air? Because if we have a week, I can spoil something. Um, yeah. <laughs> if it's going up like tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's probably going to be, uh, I'd say, Friday, Saturday-ish. Okay, so we did something that we did that was unannounced, and we've done a few other things. So the stuff that's non-spoiler-ish is we're doing this thing called a challenge card. So a lot of the companies will put a trading card with the release. Okay. On the back of our trading card has a developer-created challenge. So in Super Blood Hockey, it says take a life in in league mode. You can actually kill the players and like kill <laughs> other players. And so you take a life. You take a picture of the card. And the instructions are on the back. You tag us online, which gets us some exposure. And I personally at the house, I will mail you a challenge patch with Super Blood Hockey on it. Sewn on this handy dandy jean jacket. Dude, that is awesome now. And I'm getting awesome. I'm... And then awesome P, we have another challenge. And I got a patch. I'm getting so many like Nintendo Power, Atari Club vibes right now. It is, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was that was Activision that did that back in the day on the right, yeah, Target. Yeah, yeah. That was my wheelhouse. I had the River Raiders patch and I'm like, nice. I want to do something. I was like, if I'm ever a publisher, I'm gonna do something like that. So that's another thing we're doing that's like super retro and cool. And then on top of it, the spoilers thing, we're doing this premium slipcase that we have a artist paul niemeyer that did it paul niemeyer is the artist who did the mortal Mortal Kombat. kombat dragon as well as satan's hollow and super pac-man and tron oh, and wow. a bunch of other mm. stuff jaws 3 in the movies like he did a bunch of movie posters like like the guy is a legend he's doing all of our slip cases well inside said slip case we're doing another bonus that we haven't even announced that is literally going to be almost like the NES cartridge sleeve, but it's going to fit the Switch case in it, and it's going to be oh. red to match the Switch <laughs> with the logo, and it oh, goes inside the slip case, man. so it's almost like a full comprehensive box. Wow. And nobody's expecting it. Oh, <laughs> First three people that amazing. do an unboxing is going to blow their mind. We haven't. <laughs> I don't know how JP didn't spoil it yet. That like, is amazing. That's why I'm like, <laughs> like I can't spoil that early. Like That is cool as is shit. It? Like... <laughs> So we're we're like we're called premium edition. Our our regular editions, they're called our premium editions because like people are like, well, I don't know why you guys are charging like we're charging like forty bucks for our games. And they're like, Oh, you're charging too much for what we're getting. I'm like, well, we haven't told you about everything. And our man, our man <laughs> we're doing full manuals, like my right. super blood hockey manual. I literally had NES ice hockey and I matched the aesthetics on the interior. Oh even. my god. Nintendo oh. made me remove that you can't lick the cartridge. <laughs> I had to remove that. Because we everything has to be approved by Nintendo, by the way. Like, they right. have to look at right. it and approve it. So We like, want we our customers to know quality. they can lick these cartridges. Yeah, I because I had all of the same ones that don't blow in it, don't put it in water, all the stuff that it had in the NES one. That's, and I said, don't lick the cartridges. And they had, I had to remove all the precautions. They didn't let me keep those. <laughs> um, this, this is amazing. And I threw Easter egg. <laughs> this is amazing because yes. this is literally a retro gamer releasing retro games for retro gamers. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. everything that got you excited as a kid, you're getting again, which is as a modern mm-hmm. collector, you know, you get you switch game. It doesn't even come with an instruction manual anymore. Most of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And have swag like this is just freaking amazing. It's amazing. Well, yeah. The, the, 
And the interesting part is, is now that I'm part of the creation process, I'm looking at some of the other ones, even the ones that have manuals, and I'm like, oh, this is like a four-page bifold. Like, I was right. like, oh, this is, yeah. or, or it doesn't even have any print on the inside of the cover, and they have a clear case. Like, we have interior printing, and like super black, it's a giant, massive brawl, because you can do 12-on-12 12 12 hockey in the game. And underneath the cartridge is another dead body. <laughs> like, just nice. like, like, like Easter eggs all over our releases. Like there's a spot in the game and it's in the manual, but there's a spot in the game when you play story mode where your coach, he says, you know, just don't worry if somebody dies, just throw them in the dumpster out back. And in the manual, there's a spread and we have a dumpster in there and there's like a referee sitting in the dumpster. <laughs> like, <laughs> like in the manual, like just I saying, love that like, stuff, there, though. like yeah. we just hit every piece of the of it with, with it and we're working hand in hand in tandem with the developers as we're doing it. Um, my position more so is the creative part. I work on all of the different items. So I'm creating them too. I'm not just like, I'm working on everything on my computer. With the creation guy, I do the same thing with my books. And so I'm almost like the CCO, chief creative officer almost for, for premium as well as a co-owner. Um, and so I just enjoy it. I, I have fun. Like this weekend, I was working on the retro boxes and stuff like that. And just making sure everything popped correctly and working on the, the Switch cartridge labels and making sure those look cool. And trying to explain to developers, I don't want the same box art on the cartridge label. I want different art. I want something new, something right. cool. Um, is awesome. So one other game I could talk about is this one. Now, this this painting right here is literally what I call bot art. So if I find something cool at Goodwill, um, I put a perler of a character from the game on there. And it is a killer teddy bear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the game, though, has is ridiculous. The game's called Camp Sunshine. It was released on Steam. And the developer told us, they're like, hey, this game's coming out to switch in the, in the future. Are you interested? And we're creating a sequel. And so they put to Kickstarter a sequel that they're working on called Sunshine Manor. And so, like, literally in Camp Sunshine, it's almost like Friday the 13th, but it's done by, like, passionate gamers. And you just run around in almost like a Legend of Zelda-style 3D aesthetic, and all you have is a flashlight. If you step on a stick... That bear pops out of nowhere, talks like Freddy, and says, you're going to die, bitch. And he comes after and tries to kill you. <laughs> you got to run out of the way and hide. Oh, and There's man. this whole comprehensive story. The craziest thing is another one created by one guy, and he's also recorded all the evil synthwave music for it. And he's like a he's like a musician by like trade, or he like, teaches music out in the UK. Wow. Like, the dude's like a, like talented as hell and now he's working on a sequel to it which is even crazier which has like almost earthbound psychic abilities with it really and that's so, crazy and as we mentioned multi-application cart so why we're not going to release two cartridges we're going to release one um because one of the hardest parts is we're one of the only u.s there's only like three of us now that are u.s based like limited essentially companies like smaller companies and there's a 5,000 print run minimum for the U.S. Everywhere else is like three or two, like thousand. So like we got to we got to produce. So it's like, let's put both games on one cartridge, yeah. make it a double pack, <laughs> make it fun. Um, but like the other companies, like they're putting out these indie titles that they could put on to one cartridge and they're putting them out on multiple because, you know, they have the huge followings out there. Mm -hmm. So they can do that. I think that I would still put it on one cartridge because I want the gamers to get a good, you know, deal and not be able to like take up space on the collection. My collection is getting crazy. Like, let's put them on one. <laughs> right, like, right. That's my other mentality behind it too. Um, so, I mean, that's us in a nutshell. We have multiple versions though. We have our, you know, premium edition that has those aesthetics that we talked about. Then we have our right. retro editions that we're doing that has, you know, the it's almost like a Super Nintendo N64 style box because we want to fit all the goodies inside. If I, went, if I did an NES box, they were too small. Um, so we're doing like a steel book for a pigeon dev games collection, but yeah. it's on like a retro TV that opens up and it has all the TV innards on the inside. Oh. <laughs> and, and we, we talked with the company, they published first party Nintendo. We're the first to do like a front back, like retro style landscape steel book. That That's is like, awesome. It's <laughs> tactile. You can feel it. Like it's super cool. They all fit inside the retro box. 
And then that retro box goes inside of another case, it's like an intricate puzzle that we do. And I had to beat as the game publishing side on Neo Geo AES boxes, um, like the cases, the original ones. Yeah. And and so we can get that in there with the CD soundtrack, and we have a pin, like a really crazy premium looking pen too not like just like a tiny pen like thing is ridiculous has 3d tactile to it the wow. cd is gonna have the soundtrack on the game and that all goes hand in hand with our guide which i created the size the exact size the hardcover guide of the neo geo and it fits into a slip case that looks mirrored off of a konami style nes box oh. like like <laughs> like like ridiculousness so so like some of this stuff like um we had like jp he has a person that worked with him, called, her name's Erica, and she did a lot of his artwork and stuff for JP Switch Mania. Well, she did a lot of these mock-ups. She, her idea was the Konami, our Neo Geo AS case looks like almost like a Capcom NES box. Like Ooh. it's it's all ridiculous. It's all over the top. Um, and That's then I awesome. took the book though, I, I and I changed everything. And I made it look like a, so the, the Game Boy originally had this manual in Japan I took this manual in Japan aesthetics and I created a whole like box off of it. It's going to be 3D embossed on the cover where it's like soft touch feel, which is going to have a feeling for it. And then it's like shiny black. Instead of doing like a gold, we did like shiny black in the background and it matches the aesthetics of the cover. And it's like, it's like, oh yeah, but if you do this, it'll pop out a little bit. I'm like, perfect. That's what I want. <laughs> like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. People see it, like they're going to know, okay, this is why you're doing 40 bucks or, you know, like we're not, we're not trying to like, we're not charging it because we have, we can, we're charging because we, that's what it costs to get stuff done. Right. Like, we're having fun with it. And, and you, know, you care a little like, bit more hobby. money, you know, you get, you get your money's worth. It's, you're not getting Absolutely. ripped yeah, off. You're yeah. getting your money's worth and more. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. You. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah. And so our first thing that we did in, in it was like August, September, we did this premium direct, which we were copying off the of Nintendo direct, but it has like our cartoon characters bouncing around on it. Um, we're about to do our next direct. I want to say it'll be next month. We wanted to wait till our games were in hand so people could check them out first before we announce our next game, which is actually where this canvas will fit in um which is going to be our next release that we announce and it's a really yeah. another really cool indie title and it is going to be fun and we have so much stuff up the pipeline though there's some games out there that are like on the top indie games lists right now that we have signed and it's mind-blowing it's like that's okay awesome. you want to come with us that's cool <laughs> <laughs> that's cool i am going to they'll, they'll be impressed with what we do i will tell you that like that's it like that's all i want to do and so that's premium i mean i do lots of other stuff besides for not sleeping <laughs> <laughs> i would say so, so all so, the work you guys are putting in yeah. Dang, geez oh it's it's a lot it's insane i didn't realize how much until i started well on top of that you guys are doing the switch mania playcast which is a podcast uh where you guys are just kind of not only talking games but from what i was able to hear talking about the business you know from your guys's perspective which um there are a million and one podcasts out there about comics about games about movies but there aren't many that give that perspective and i found that very interesting uh just to hear what you guys had to say from where you guys are and if that makes sense in the community yeah yeah it's, it is interesting we started just simply because like jp never plays his games and so we were like we're gonna do a play cast where we play a game every week <laughs> and it forces him to open stuff and I want to play more in the backlog because when you uh, start collecting a lot of games, like you get the scope creep. Like there's too much. You don't even yeah. want to play anything because there's just too much available. And fortunately, I got a nine year old now that she wants to play like Mario 3D World right now. So that's what I was playing before this was. I was I playing Mario 3D World with my daughter, <laughs> which is freaking amazing. Um, but it was like that was the idea. And then when premium started, like when we got the um, OK to start, you know, incorporating and, and making the company happen we were like why don't we just be that transparent company let's talk yeah like it is the last episode we did we talked about games that we've been playing that literally some of them we may or may not have signed like we didn't we didn't spoil if we did or not but we talked about a good half dozen games and we were right. talking about what we thought about them if we liked them what we didn't like about them or whatever but and we revealed the process of how nintendo is back and forth and like how when I'm using certain programs, like you send it to them and then you get shot down. And you're like, no, yeah. do it again. 
do it right. <laughs> or the lot checks that took forever back and forth. Like Super Blood Hockey was released two years ago. And it took two months of back and forth with like several, maybe eight iterations of bugs that they kept finding. I'm like, this game's already published. Nintendo, you're ninjas. You're crazy. <laughs> like, how are you finding this stuff? And so like we're going into depth and that's like what a lot of people are really enjoying. It's just like pulling the cur- curtain back and talking about things. And, yeah, you know, I mean, at, th- at this point, we're talking about UK shipping, too, even with the whole um, VAT taxes and things that are coming out like it's right. insanity. It's- and it's just, I mean, that put a pause on people in the UK being able to buy our games because we have an international distributor, Video Games Plus, and they turned it off because they had to figure it out. And oh, wow. they said they just turned it on today, and they said it's like 20% more, and they they it, they have to charge it. Like, it's wow, that's like insane. literally what the country is charging them to get stuff imported into their country, essentially. It's wow. insane. But like we we pull up we you know we pull it back we talk about it um we also talk about all the newest Switch stuff of course um, yeah and JP hasn't stopped JP Switch Mania so I'm assuming he's so tired he can come on today because he was probably up all night posting all the crazy amount of pre-orders that come out this week because <laughs> it's been insane with the direct that happened last week sure like I feel bad for the guy because he's <laughs> like nonstop. <laughs> It's cool though, man. Again, you know, you guys playing the games, talking about the games, that total total relatability, but then being able to then, like you uh, so eloquently put it, pull that curtain back and uh, see. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm saying what I said already. Just bravo to you. You have a, you have a good <laughs> podcast. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But thank um, you. another I, thing to touch on. To you guys over the year too. Over the years too. Like the I think it was about a year ago. I think uh, our our mutual friend Ape and Steve like introduced me to you mm-hmm. guys, and I've been. Yep. I listen. I listen oh, really? on and off whenever there's an interesting topic. I'll I'll pop it on. I think the last one that I I caught because for some reason it doesn't always pop into my feed because I go running. For you know, and I'll listen to a podcast. It was the Eastman episode. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. With the last yeah, Ronin was... episode. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I got a copy of the last Ronin because I don't collect comics. Apparently, <laughs> 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 definitely got a copy of it. I I pre-ordered it. It came in really late, but it's so cool. Yeah, uh, the second issue uh, just came out this uh, past Wednesday, and. Um, it's even better. I'm hoping I pre ordered the series. I hope I pre ordered the series. <laughs> the issue two is even better than issue one. You would you will love Damn. it. You'll love it. Damn. But Need um it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's some of the best reading I've had in a while. But turtles aside, because if you get me on that, man, I'm not gonna stop talking about the ninja turtles, I promise <laughs> you. Um, but your Switch Collector books, I wanted to talk about those oh, yeah. uh, as well, because those look very good. And I just, I, I guess hmm. I don't know well, exactly okay. what is in them. Can you tell me and the listeners uh, what they are exactly? Sure, I can pull back the curtain a little. Um, ooh! So, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've actually been publishing uh, books for about seven years now. I have 13 books published on various video games. Started with the NES did a complete NES book. I did every Nintendo Entertainment System game with the box art, the screenshots, um, and then a little spot where you could collect them and a little write-up on each game for the NES. That and I did amazing. this years before others were doing because others have followed in my footsteps, and they're more popular on YouTube. And they're, I did it, like, years before that. Um, but I've been doing that, and I, pu- I started my publishing myself and learning all myself because I went to a publishing company and they were going to offer me like 5% or something ridiculous. Oh, and I'm like, I'll just figure out myself. And there's like print on demand companies and stuff. And mm-hmm, sure. as I started to look, and I'm OCD, so as I started to look and I found more companies, and I found more like direct to, you know, warehouses and direct to printers. And like over the years, I've honed in the quality and everything. Um, I've, finally hit the stride i've been working on the sega genesis book for like four years now and people have been poking me because i did a super nintendo book that's 630 pages covers all regions everything like it's insane did a virtual boy book um holy shit uh, the NES <laughs> pamphlet. That, that nes home actually you say pamphlet the goal the joke was i was going to make a hundred page hardcover virtual boy book it's 180 pages Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. I covered every homebrew game because there's a lot of indie games on the on the virtual. Okay, boy. I did not know. And that. I, yeah. And instead of doing like <clears throat> three games per page, I did full full page spreads okay. and made it 
and put a lot of screenshots made it amazing it's like an awesome tribute to the system that um, so but cool. it was ironic it, it could have been a pamphlet for sure like it could have been an instruction book or something um but yeah i can't do anything small unfortunately <laughs> um, <laughs> that that nes oddities in the homebrew revolution book i mentioned earlier um that's 500 pages on nes homebrew and famicom Gee, games man, japanese Christ. exclusives like i did a hidden gaming gems book that covered every generation from pong all the way to the switch um, and that's another 500 page book. That's an amazing treat. Um, a covered oxygen version that <laughs> for sure. Oh, wow. That's uh, and, nice. and Battle Kid. <laughs> and Battle Kid. Um, I don't know if I've covered Meat Boy. Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't played Dead Souls at that the time. So, Dead Cells. Dead, dead Souls. Cells, yeah. <laughs> be Souls. I'm sure there's a um, Dead Souls game out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not wrong. I probably is. <laughs> um, so, then, then the latest idea, which actually stemmed from. A year or two ago where I had an April Fool's joke and I'm like, I'm going to do the complete switch, like the complete switch. It's not even all out yet. So that'd be kind of ironic. Right. People were like, oh, no, we need a switch book. And they kept pinging me. So JP and I did play cast. We're, we're talking and I'm like, well, what if we did a switch collector book and cover it every year? So that way I go to 2017 the first year and we cover it and instead of doing all these short little blippets. Mm. We do like page long blippets and then with some games get two pages or zelda mm. breath of the wild gets about six or eight or something Ooh, like it gets yeah. a lot um and then we allow like because i always take my books to kickstarter and we allow the backers to write a story in the book about their switch stories which i think is super fun and then we took we cover not only all the physical games that were released in year one but the digital only games and this is before premium the digital only games that don't have a physical yet that we want to get a physical and so I go back in my volume one. I'm looking back because it's over here. I'm looking back at volume one, and there are games now that have a physical release, and it's super cool that we we have physical releases on these games. So it's kind of like, all right, companies, read this stuff now. These are the guys you need to reach out to because here's a game that you might like. That's and cool. I've been working on volume two now. Um, I'm writing, and it's already been funded on Kickstarter. All I got to do is finish up a few reviews. Goal was to have it done by February. Premium edition had another other ideas for me, um, <laughs> but I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna be done in February. I, I'm finishing up the physical section. I finished up the digital only for volume two. Uh, volume one was 312 pages. Volume two is going to be over 400 pages. Um, wow. And that's volume two only covers the first half of year two. Wow. Whew. First half. That's crazy. Yeah. There are so many Switch games. It is insane. There are thousands now physically. And it was when we started the book series, there was like 600. Now there's over a thousand. And that's when you go to other regions that also support English and it's region free and like, oh my gosh. And then. I hit a stretch goal on the first series where they're like, yeah, if you if we hit this stretch goal, we'll cover the Japanese games that don't support English so you can just know what they are for collectors. Well, I got to do it. I got to be consistent now. And they hit the stretch goal. So I can do like all the <laughs> Japanese and all the non-English games. There are German games too. And I have those in there. Like, oh, why did they have to hit my OCD nature? <laughs> <laughs> Seems but like your OCD nature is uh, really coming in handy, though. The thing is, that's my solace, though. Otherwise, I'd drive my wife nuts around the house or something. So I just yeah. I just come in into the office channel here, the game somewhere. room, and, and channel my <laughs> negative energies toward making something look really cool. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, and over the years, too, on top of it, I've grown because Hagen's Alley is what it's called. Hagen's Alley, like my last name's Witten Hagen and Hogan's Alley. My wife oh, came up with that. I see. Um, <laughs> um, Hagen's Alley Books is the is the site. But um, I also have other authors now that I've signed. Uh, we just released a Easy Way Friday the 13th NES book where you can beat Friday the 13th if you play this book, which you literally can. It's ridiculous. I didn't think it was true. And. He made me play it. So then I'm like, all right, you got it. Wow. <laughs> um, we have a history of punch out book coming out from a different author because eight bit Steve's the one who did the easy way. Mm -hmm. um, yep. There's a guy, Dan, uh, that's doing a punch out book that years ago went to Kickstarter and he just never was able to be able to, um, to print it. And so we reached out to him and we're like, Hey, so he, he did right by his backers and all that. But, um, like we were like, hey, we can you know take this to Kickstarter. I'll I'll help you get it to print. Like too easy. Um, and then we're working on another one. It's like History of Mortal Kombat. That's another book nice. that another author's doing. Nice. And then if you know the YouTuber John Riggs, he's doing a serial book. 
<laughs> dude, a book on cereals. Like, hey, I would read dude, that. I would dude's read that. Dude's a gamer, but he loves cereal. I'm like, yeah, we'll do a cereal book, man. That's so, like, awesome. And and I mean, I'm taking what I went through, which is you know five percent to the the authors. I'm like, no, it's the opposite way. Like the I'm just helping get you there. It depends on what work I have to put into it. If I got to create your whole book, okay, we'll talk. If it's I'm literally just coordinating things, like no, like you need to get you know the monetary compensation for your work. So yeah. I'm actually helping out right. the, the smaller authors get their stuff out and in the best quality possible for the best affordable price and all that because I've been figuring out things as I do. Right. <laughs> well, that's amazing, man. Like yeah. all the all the different uh, pies you guys have your fingers in is uh, freaking amazing. How you guys even have time to have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looked a little perverted, but I... <laughs> sounded a little perverted too. <laughs> I guess you're right. Uh... I guess we're both guilty. But um, as far as people reaching out and like finding out more about you guys, you just mentioned uh, HagensAlley.com, I believe, and then so it's, on yeah, it's HagensAlley.com is the the book site. Yep. And then on Twitter, I found uh, at Premium Edition One. Where else uh, mm -hmm. should we be directing people? So the website for Premium Edition Games is premiumeditiongames.com. Real hard to find. Easy enough, um, right? Um, yeah, and we're, we're at Premium Edition on the other things. I think the the one you mentioned at Premium Edition 1, that Premium Edition was taken, so we had to take one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, we're yeah. the best. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that it's just been a fun ride. Um, yeah, so we have our first two games. They're open for pre-order, but if the snowmageddon of texas didn't just happen like the games would be shipping literally this week so we're like everything is just we're just waiting on it to come in and be i think it's in production this week and so it, everything was ordered so that'll be the premium editions will be shipping now the retro and deluxe pulling back the curtain uh, there was something called the chinese new year that just happened so it put a halt on all production for an entire yeah. month oh. so that picks up this week so this week um we should start making progress and getting things and it takes about four to six to arrive from overseas um to arrive so about four to six weeks we be, should be shipping the retro and deluxe editions including the book and everything because the strategy guide has been completely written and everything too well, um, it's is... over 120 pages <laughs> it's amazing man. maybe two, maybe two maybe 200 pages close. <laughs> it's close it's it's insane um, it's not a pamphlet <laughs> Yeah. No. I mean, we even did a history of the how to, how we made the physical in the back of the book. Like that is awesome, <laughs> crazy stuff. Um, so yeah, that stuff's coming. Unfortunately, Switch Collector Volume One's been sold out for a while. So I may have to like do another print run in the future, so that way those that want to get Volume Two can get Volume One. So right. um, didn't think of that when I took Volume Two to Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, I should probably just have. Uh, a combo pack and allowed some funds to be raised so we could just print more copies for people because you know we do small batch uh printings when it comes to the book stuff like i like to keep it like based on the support that everybody has allows me to keep doing it so right. <laughs> that's what that's how i roll um you know with the switch it's a little different because nintendo has minimum quality quantities and for the quality um but has minimum quantities that are available so um, but yeah, there's, I sold a lot of books up at Hagen's Alley that people can check out, um, giant Super Nintendo books and fun okay. compendiums of stories. And I like to yeah. do like the history of Nintendo from our perspective, growing up with it and different stuff that nobody's touched. It's really fun. Yeah. They're cool. They're I on, mean, I've, I've yeah. saw some samples online and, uh, I mean, everything you guys are creating is uh, very well done and there's a lot of care and respect going into the medium. So uh, just thank you so much, Jeff, for being here to talk about all this and just hang out and have fun with us. This has been freaking amazing, man. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Okay. Absolutely. Jack, what do we have on the website, sir? Go to CannedAirPodcast.com where you see show highlights, guest info, listen to the show, follow us on all our social media, become a patron, buy some merch. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, click on that evergreen link and find another podcast but keep listening to us and if you'd like to be a guest and promote your work send us an email on our contacts page listen to them after <laughs> us not yeah. before after that's right drink ever clear while you listen to them too <laughs> you can find us on twitter at canned air pod and on instagram at canned underscore air 
And uh, again, uh, on the website, the Patreon button, if you want to show some support, get some uh, extra content in return for said support and merchandise, exclusive merchandise over there, uh, depending on how much you donate. Uh, it's all over there at patreon.com forward slash Gandare pod. And those awesome patches. Those things are so yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing with them in the camera on this audio only <laughs> I know, I, but still, they're so freaking cool. It's I've been like, doing it the whole time we're recording. It's great. Honestly, yeah. when you first brought those things up, when you were saying people take a picture of their score, I thought for sure you were going to say, and then put it on a five by seven self-addressed uh, card and send it to you know, right <laughs> i mean you want to mention comic books before we wrap up um i was involved with and this will pull back the curtain again my any out of this book the artist was involved with disney he did beauty and the beast he did the little mermaid he did dragon's lair um, oh, wow. and he did my cover of my book He's associated with a guy who does comic books. He did this comic book called The Haunted Tales of Bachelors Grow. I put in a promo for Hagen Jelly Books in there, and I literally had a spot where you could cut out and mail in to join the fun club. That's so cool, man. <laughs> I love it's that stuff. comic book. <laughs> I love that I got that stories, stuff. guys. I got stories. <laughs> we're we're going to have to weird get, stuff. We're gonna have to have you back on, and uh, maybe Jonathan can uh, free up some time to come, too. And we are just going to have a blast because this has been fucking amazing. We've had a lot of fun. I'm crazy. Jonathan's the crazy one. I'm the normal one. (laughs) Wow. That's going to make for a good episode then. (laughs) All right, everyone. I think that's going to do it for this week. So until next time, I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. I'm Randy Hardenbrook. And I'm Jeffrey Wittenhagen. Thanks so much for listening, everyone, and be excellent to each other. are mean, so I'm running away from home. Where are you gonna go? I don't know yet, but that'll show them. <laughs> it sure will. Shipwreck! Parents just don't understand, and it gets lonely on the road, so be sure to listen to the Candare podcast. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! This has been a Candare production. 